What goes into the process of making a song for ESPN? Um, intention. I'm a big ESPN fan. You know, I watch a lot of ESPN shows, so um, it's the intention on understanding that, you know, the audience that's watching this, right? Making it exciting, making it uh, motivating, making it prolific, making it electrifying, something that people can hear. And it's just like, they want to continue to watch the game or continue to watch the show that's coming up or sports center, whatever it may be. Um, I just look at it with the intent to intensify whatever placement is, wherever it's going to land at. Did you ever foresee yourself being on ESPN? I mean, they have different songs that pop up here and there, but for you, was that like a goal of yours or? So today I realized I got drafted by the NBA, right? So I always thought I would be on ESPN as a basketball player, right? I made it to the NBA as an artist. So I've made music for the NBA. I go to a lot of games. I'm cool with the players. I hang out in the locker rooms. So essentially, I feel like I'm in the NBA now. Um, so making music for it is not only a dream, um, it's really like iconic for me. You know, I grew up wanting to be a part of that station and wanting to be a part of that channel by wanting to be a basketball player. So it's, it's a true blessing. Is the recording process any different? I've been to a lot of different studio sessions. I've never been to one that's in some ways curated. Yeah. Uh, is it different? Um. Yeah, it's different because like I said in the beginning, it's the intent behind it. So most of the time as an artist, when we record music, we just kind of freelancing. You know what I mean? We having fun in there, different ideas may come. Your friend might say something in the back that ends up being the hook. But this is very attention to detail because it's, the widest audience you're probably going to get on TV, right? So you don't want to say nothing to offend anyone. You don't want to say nothing that doesn't make sense with the audience. So it's just really taking time to pay attention to detail and hit the target for what I feel is best suiting for the ESPN audience. Yeah, you keep saying intention. I think one of the funniest things about the entire process of you doing this is artists don't like people in their studio sessions yeah. telling them, hey, you should do this, you should do that. Fact. Essentially, you got an ESPN guy right here. Who right there. You, yeah. Hey, man, run it, run it back, run it back. Now just watch you do it over. He didn't do that. But if he did, um, or if there was another artist, a lot of that can get annoying. Talk yeah. to me about being able to take um, direction, not yeah. criticism, but just like, hey, do this over again, yeah. things like that. Because you're used to... I'll record this 10 times over, but it's my decision, yeah. not someone else's. One thing I learned about being an artist is like, um, sometimes we live in our world so much we forget other people exist in their own, right? So what you may like may not be fitting for what this company is going for, what this brand is going for. So it would be different if my man hit me and say, hey, we want you to make a song for the playing tournament. And I'd be like, I can do whatever I want. He like, yeah, you can do whatever you want. And I do the song, he's like, well, we want to change this and want to change that, want to but you told me I can do whatever I want. You know what I mean? So with this, like I said, it was attention to detail. We, uh, we sent the first rough in and it was a bunch of notes that came back, right? So we had to go through those notes. And when the notes first came back, I was like, when they tripping? I was like, this sound good. But then it made a lot more sense once I heard it. So once we correct the first note, I was like, oh, no, they right. Mm -hmm. Like, they know what they're talking about. So once we start tweaking everything, it was just exciting to kind of see it all unfold. Talk to me about your relationship with ESPN now that you have one, because yeah. I'm sure you've done different partnerships where you'd be like, man, they're doing this for a money grab, but they just want to be a part of the culture and yeah. are really culture vultures. But when you got somebody who's flies all the way out here to ensure that this is going well. Yeah. It's really like, yo, you're killing it. Yeah. Uh, that means a lot more than just being like, all right, we'll take this song. One thousand percent, man. Um, the worldwide leader in sports, you know, we all grow up wanting to play sports, whether it's basketball, football, baseball, soccer, hockey, whatever it is, we grow up wanting to play sports and where's the place we go to watch it? ESPN, you know, and um, I have a, personal relationship with ESPN because I have friends that have shows there. Jalen Rose is my guy. Uh, Michael Wilbaum is my guy. Stephen A. Smith. These are people, I, I actually took a broadcast journalism class because of Stephen A. Smith. Like literally, I took the class to learn what it is he know about projecting certain information to an audience. Um, so ESPN has definitely played a big part in my life, just motivating me to get up 
and want to go do something and make a difference in my life rather than sitting on the couch doing nothing, right? When you see LeBron come across that screen and dunk, you want to go to the gym. You see KD hit that three, you want to go for a jog or get up and do what you great at. So I got a lot of love for ESPN. I'm just truly appreciative for this opportunity. They say uh, music and basketball or music and sports Synonymous. go hand in hand. Yeah. Uh, talk to me about some relationships that you have with artists and when you name drop an, an athlete and a relationship you have with athletes and when you name drop an athlete and they hit you up and what's that like? Yeah, it's uh, it's validating. It's validating. Draymond Green is my guy. Um, I got a lot of Draymond bars. I got a lot of KD bars. Kevin Durant's my guy. He actually came to the studio. Um, we were working on results, take time. He listened to it top to bottom. He was like, bro, I'm ready to go hoop right now. He was like this overnight guy, we ready to go hoop right now. So um, I think as rappers, we're kind of like the NBA players that didn't make it. And the NBA players are like the rappers that wasn't good enough. <laughs> you know what I mean? But it all ties into this competitive nature. We all competitive. Um, those players going out there every night, whether you the first man up or you the 15th man on the bench, they going out there every night with the intention to win. Same way we go into the studio. I'm not going in the studio to just make a song to make a song. I'm going in the studio with the intentions to win. And I feel like that's the commonality between the two is the competitive nature of it all. So now a follow-up to that. When, when you think about that relationship, is that one of the reasons you decided to partake in this opportunity? Nah, I just love the NBA and ESPN. <laughs> it, it had nothing to do. What's crazy is, like, if this was like a sport that I didn't watch, I probably wouldn't do it, right? Because I have no connection to it. But when I go home and I press power on my television, the first thing that's going to come on is ESPN. You know what I mean? So I'd be a fool to not take that opportunity, especially with it being something I watch and I'm, I'm a part of every day. Um... What other sports do you watch? You said if it wasn't a sport you watch, I won't make you call out the sports you don't watch, but yeah. what other sports do you watch? I watch um, a lot of basketball, of course. Um, I like football, but I'm not really the biggest football fan. Um, I've recently become a tennis fan. Um, I went to a few tennis games, and I used to think tennis was just like golf, right? I used to think it was this boring game, people just hitting the ball back and forth. But then when I went to my first tennis match, I actually seen the thought process and the strategy that goes into it. So it's like they're basically making the ball do the opposite of what they want their opponent to do, right? So I watched this, uh, this tennis player, he like hit the ball three times in the same spot. But on the fourth time, he hit it a little like more to the to the left so it made the guy adjust in a way to where he hit the net right he couldn't get it back over the net so it was a strategy of him just like welding down welding down welding down and he just like hit it a little bit to the left and then do it run and he hit the net so seeing that strategy was something that was like real cool to me so i'm a uh, i'm a new tennis fan uh i watch baseball here and there hockey here and there. i'm a sports fan but basketball is my thing that's what i play yeah, going to live events changes the way you think about sports. Definitely. Because I went to the U.S. Open last year. It was Serena's last match. Wow. And, uh, I mean, just seeing seeing those things, it just changes your perspective. Yeah. Especially when you see the size of an athlete, yep. the way that they hit it, both men and women. It yep. doesn't really matter. Just the skill that they have. And golf is the same way. Yeah. I mean, you go to top golf after watching somebody golf, and it makes you... It makes you want to learn it, yeah. right? Because it's like you see the actual technique that goes into it. At home, we're like comfortable, we're on the couch, so we're just watching it for our enjoyment. When you actually at the event, you kind of see the whole thing play out. You see like the coach and the trainer and like, they're talking to them, and they're giving them game and they're coming back and applying this. So just the strategy behind it is exciting to me because that's what goes into a lot of my music is strategy. Got a few more for you. Um, do you think opportunities like this help you grow and how so? 1000%. Um, I feel like music is in this space right now where it's hard to discover artists because of the mass amount of content, right? Spotify uploads about 50,000 songs a day, and that's what, close to a million songs a month. So how do you cut through like with all that traffic, right? How do you make a name with all that traffic? Um, for me, it's been platforms. It's been things like ESPN, video games, um, opportunities with the Warriors and different NBA teams. Um, so I found a way to help my music live in other spaces to where people can find out about me. 
So there's a lot of people who don't know my name, right? Probably heard of me, uh, probably seen a freestyle here or there, heard a song, but when they cut on that NBA Friday night or they watch that play-in tournament, they gonna say, who is this? Let me go look them up, right? Then they look it up and they find a whole catalog of things they can listen to. ESPN provided that platform for me to do that, you know? So it's very important as an artist to um, take advantage of these opportunities because it helps us get on platforms that's not so confusing as the streaming process. You just saw, and you just saw uh, your, your song. Yeah. Uh, talk to me about what it's like to get an early preview before it actually comes out during the play. Man, it's amazing, bro. Uh, when we were working on the song, Dev, he's over there, it's my engineer. We was working on the song. We were watching commercials on ESPN, like we were pulling up clips on YouTube, watching it, like, oh, say the word right here on this part, like make the beat go do, 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 cause they gonna dunk like do, do, do. So he was like specifically like crafting it for the commercial. So to actually see it pan out exactly what we envisioned in our mind even better, it's amazing, bro. I can't wait. And last and final question, what's next for Simba? Well, I recently uh, just got my first movie role um, we're in my studio. I just bought my first studio, which is going to be a media center for podcasting and all things media, music as well. Um, so really the evolution of Simba is really tightening my business up and stepping more into the executive side. You know, um, I feel like a lot of artists, sometimes we get stuck in just wanting to be hot and wanting to be the man. But it's like we leave a whole ton of opportunities just by not lacing up our business and being being executive. So. I bought this place to basically have a place for me to become a boss. You know what I mean? And stationalize my thoughts and my creativity and the people that I'm working with and help them as well. Um, so the evolution of me is definitely stepping into an executive space, continuing to put more music out, um, continue to do more movies always, but really slide into that executive space is what I'm looking to do. And I just thought of one more fun question. Yeah. Name your top five NBA player rappers. Top five. In order? It's up to you. All right. I don't, you know, I'm going to go in order. I don't want to start no drama now. They be saying the media start drama. You, you could be responsible. I love the that, drama, especially the sports drama. Number one, I'm going with LeBron James. You heard him rap? Oh, you said rap. I, I, I thought you meant player. Nah, I mean, we'll do, let's do both. Let's do both. Okay. Top five players, and then we'll do top five okay. player rappers. So my top five NBA players. Number one would be LeBron James. Um, number two would be Kobe Bryant. Number three would be Allen Iverson. Number four would be Kevin Durant. And number five would be Michael Jordan. Those are your favorites. Those are my personal top five. I go back and forth with, with uh, KD and Steph mm -hmm. at times because Steph reinvented the game so much, but I just relate to KD as a player and his style of play so much. And I just love the smoothness to it. Um, so those would be my top five. Um, LeBron, Kobe, AI, KD or Steph, and Mike. And then rappers. Rappers, Dame Lillard, Marvin Bagley. Um, who's another good rapper? Um, JaVale McGee. Um... It's one I'm not thinking about. He's really good. KD. KD can rap. KD can rap. <laughs> but it's one more that I can't remember. He's really good. Um, I can't remember. Who you play for? He's an older player. Shaq? No, not Shaq. Shaq was terrible. As a rapper. Um, he wasn't that bad. Shaq wasn't that bad. Was it... Rasheed Wallace. I think it was Rasheed Wallace. Mm. Rasheed Wallace had some bars. Kobe spit too. Kobe was a great basketball player. Let's leave, let's leave the bars to me. <laughs> Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.